Tesla stock is crashing here in 2024. Let's look at their recent earnings report, their fundamentals, and do some discounted cash flow analysis to find some fair value buy prices and see is Tesla a good buy the dip opportunity. Our first up, of course, on their chart, we're currently sitting at 190 a share, down 1% today. Year to date, we're down 23%. Past year, 2%. Past five years, we are still up massively 800%. We have an all time high back in November of 2021 at 407 a share. We're down still over 50% from all time highs. So, not too good. We did have a low back in the beginning of 2023 at 113 a share. We're up 68% from that low. So, we're not at the lowest price, but we're still at a pretty low valuation compared to its history. We'll do some analysis to see if it's time to buy. Now, of course, Tesla just reported their Q4 2023 earnings, and there was a lot of good numbers, but a lot of bad numbers as well. Here's a financial summary on a quarterly basis of a bunch of important metrics here. First up, total automotive revenues at the top up 1% year over year to $21.5 billion. That's okay, but obviously not the best growth there. Total revenue up 3%, a little better with service revenue and energy generation and storage revenue up a bit more, but that's a very small part of their business. Now, over time, if that grows, that's great. It diversifies Tesla's business overall, but still, we're not there yet. We have gross profit down 23%. That's a pretty big deal. Gross profit margins as well down 6%. Operating expenses up 27% income from operation down 47 percent that's a big big deal now net income is up a lot 115 percent but what's more important in my opinion is the income from operations because net income can be manipulated if you have more interest income that goes straight to the bottom line but operating income is strictly from the operations of the business if that is going down that means the core business is becoming more and more unprofitable now this isn't too surprising elon musk said they're lowering prices for vehicles because they want to keep demand up they want the vehicles to still sell and they're going to deliberately you know make less money in the short term with hopes that tesla will continue to sell and over the longer run it's going to work out for them which again we'll see if that happens there there are other reasons for lower income in the short term as well but it's an interesting strategy and could it just mean that tesla is also losing their pricing power and just can't sell vehicles at a high price like they were able to in the past couple years that's a possibility as well but regardless we do still have a lot of other good metrics here like net cash provided by operating activities up 33 percent capital expenditures they're spending money fine but free cash flow is still up 45 percent and cash on hand up 31 percent as well so all the numbers, of course, as I said, aren't completely terrible. There are some good things here as well. Now, on a yearly basis, of course, they're still doing well. Total revenue up 15%. We have service revenue up 37%. Energy and storage revenue up 54%. Revenue again, 19% there. Gross profit, though, is down 15%. Gross margins down as well, 7% there. Operating expenses up a little bit by 22%. Operating margins down as well again, so... No, they're struggling a little bit here. Net income is up 19%, not too bad there. We have net cash provided by our operating activities down 10%, CapEx up 24%, free cash flow down 42% year over year, and cash on hand up 31%. So a, a mixed bag of numbers here for sure. Now for a closer look at certain metrics with revenue again, revenue is up 3% year over year to $25 billion. Revenue was impacted by growth in vehicle deliveries, growth in other parts of the business, positive foreign exchange impact and it was negatively impacted by of course reduced vehicle average selling price that i just mentioned there and lower fsd revenue recognition year over year due to fsd beta wide release in north america so that's of course in its early stages but still interesting stuff there for profitability here of course operating income was down year over year to 2.1 billion dollars and 8.2 percent operating margin which is okay but not too good uh, profitability was negatively impacted by a reduced vehicle average selling price due to pricing and mix again increase in operating expenses partly driven by ai and other r d projects interesting lower fsd revenue recognition due to the fsd beta wide release in north america in q4 2022 cost of cyber truck production ramp as well and profitability was positively impacted by lower cost per vehicle including lower raw material costs logistic costs and ira credit benefit interesting growth in vehicle deliveries of course and gross profit growth in energy generation and storage so while it didn't impact operating income we did record a one-time non-cash tax benefit of 
5.9 billion dollars for q4 for the release of valuation allowance on certain deferred tax assets that's probably why their net income was up so much q4 last year and their operating income was down so much so as i said sometimes these things get added to your bottom line with net income and it's obviously not coming from the core business so you really can't look at that too much there so at least they're explicitly saying that in their report for cash as well cash on hand of course doing pretty well a couple billion dollars there now for vehicle deliveries of course production here the numbers are okay model 3 and y production up 14 percent other models down 12 percent overall production is up 13 percent for deliveries here model 3 and y deliveries up 19 percent other models up 34 percent total deliveries up 20 percent good stuff there of course solar deployed down a lot actually and storage deployed up 30 percent so solar is struggling a little bit but that kind of makes sense there with higher interest rates right now tesla locations up 25 percent mobile service fleet 21 percent increase supercharger stations and connectors both up 27 and 29 percent respectively for some charts as well on a quarterly basis you can see on the left vehicle deliveries up massively since q1 2021 great to see in the middle operating cash flow has been increasing it's been a little volatile but it is going up over time and free cash flow as well a little volatile again but it is kind of going up although you want to see a sharper increase over time but it's still okay and finally on the right net income and adjusted EBITDA still growing at a decent pace here but it has been a bit volatile so you want to see less volatility over time which I'm pretty sure Tesla will achieve and for charts on a trailing 12 month basis as well it looks a little better you're seeing more growth here on the left with vehicle deliveries free cash flow operating cash flow as well net income and adjusted EBITDA a little more growth there which is good but still you want to see that increase a bit more over time on a more consistent basis. Now let's break down a bunch of important fundamentals for Tesla stock, including current financials, future growth rates, valuation, profitability, and much more. But first, I want to quickly mention Alpha Picks. It's a really cool thing that Seeking Alpha does where they give you a bunch of stock buy and sell alerts every month here. And you could get some amazing returns. This one here, Super Microcomputer, they picked back in November of 2022. The stock is up 800%. Recently here, they picked Twilio, Pepsi, a bunch of stocks here that are down. And they do a lot of analysis to make sure that these are great stocks to hold for massive returns here. They're beating the market buy a lot here alpha picks returns 100 percent compared to the markets 32 percent so i'm giving you a little exclusive look here at some of the recent stocks if you want to copy these up on screen but if you want access to alpha picks here they're doing a really crazy sale of 89 bucks for the year which goes away in a couple of days on february the 15th so the price is going to go up massively in a couple of days here of course if you buy any of the stocks they pick here on a monthly basis you'll make back your investment at tenfold so it, it pays for itself honestly definitely click the link down below to get alpha picks the sale is going away very very soon but now for tesla's fundamentals here are a lot of cool numbers i'm going to look at their numbers on a quarterly basis because on an annual basis it's obvious that they have grown massively since 2014 to now so it would be a bit redundant to go through those numbers but on a quarterly basis we get a better idea as to what they've been experiencing past couple of years here where we've seen most of their growth and struggles so right here since june 2021 revenue has grown at a pretty good pace it has slowed down a bit recently but still respectable growth here up to 25 billion dollars gross profit as well from 2.5 billion to a bit under 5 billion dollars it's again been a bit volatile but still respectable growth there operating income as well around a billion dollars there to two billion dollars we had a lot more operating income during 2022 so that is a big glaring issue the main problem i have with tesla right now which again they're doing this on purpose over time they should have more operating income but it is a cause for concern for sure and net income of course up massively this past quarter though we do have that tax asset it's not a real part of their business it is what it is there but if we exclude this past quarter net income has been kind of growing but still a bit volatile now for their balance sheet cash on hand looks really good now over 29 billion dollars total current assets growing nicely as well to just under 50 billion dollars and total assets up to 106 billion dollars so pretty solid stuff there long-term debt here is down massively as well another great great metric and total liabilities up but not that much to 43 billion dollars a lot less than their assets on hand so overall their balance sheet does look pretty good and for their cash flow statement as well cash from operations 
conditions up decently here. The growth has been volatile again, but still not too bad. Now they have been issuing common stock, which is dilutive to shareholders and not too good, but still it's not terrible. I think over time, this will definitely decrease. And finally, another important metric here, free cash flow per share has been again, a bit volatile, but still not terrible. Now for future earnings expectations here, we have earnings per share estimates looking solid to 37, 22, 17, 17 percent and then revenue estimates here 14 21 15 12 22 21 not too bad there. If their current valuation, it is a bit high, uh, obviously a lot better than the thousand plus PE ratio we saw back in 2020, 2021, but still a 45 PE ratio going up to 69. That's got to come down over time for sure. Price of sales as well, a little elevated and price of cash flow a little elevated as well. So of course, you're going to give companies good PE ratios for fast growth and or a good moat reputation. The question is, how high are you willing to go? Does Tesla deserve a 70 PE ratio? I'm not so sure. And for growth as well, 18% looking pretty solid. Earnings per share growth looking okay as well. Free cash flow per share growth a bit slow, but not bad. At least it's positive. Operating cash flow growth down this year, but up next year. So not terrible, but we want to see those growth numbers go up a bit more over time. And profitability as well. Gross profit margins, 18%. Not bad, but it should be a bit higher, which hopefully we'll see. Net income margins, 15%. Not bad as well. Much higher than the sector medium, but still we want to see that increase from a company like Tesla, especially. Cash from operations looking pretty good there. So again, they're doing okay. We're just having a rough couple of quarters here. But over time, again, the belief is that profitability will be a bit more consistent and continue to increase. And compared to the market as well. Tesla is underperforming down 6% the past year compared to the S&P's 23% return. Past three years, Tesla is down 28% compared to the market's 28% positive return. Not terrible, but still underperforming. Past three years, though, Tesla is up massively 800% compared to the market's 85% return. So again, over time, you know, the belief is that buying right now on this current dip will yield you a pretty good market beating return. And now for some discounted cash flow analysis here, let's find some fair value buy prices for Tesla. So revenue growth rates, as we saw around mid to high teens, maybe low 20s. That's what I have there. Margins have been a bit volatile. I have 14 to 16 and free cash flow margins are a bit lower, 8 to 12%. PE disposition is the PE ratio. Tesla will be at in five years. I'm going to give them a low 30s, which is respectable considering the growth that they have. Now, you could give them a higher PE ratio if the margins were higher, but they're not there right now. Of course, discount rate is the return you want annually in buying the stock. If you buy the market, you'll get around 8 to 9%. If I'm buying an individual stock, it's more risky, so I want a higher return. And shares at staying is important. Of course, if it's going up, the company is diluting their shares, not good for our returns. If it's going down, the company is buying back their shares, good for our returns. Tesla it's still diluting by a little bit every year. But based on these assumptions, we have some fair value buy prices for Tesla stock. Low end here, buy price is 137. Mid case, the buy is at 166. High end of the buy price is 199. And right now, we're at 191. So Tesla is a bit overvalued still with the low and mid case assumptions based on these assumptions, but for the high end assumption, it's actually a buy. So it depends on what you're looking at here. And this could change a lot based on their margins. I feel like margins are a big deal because if you look here, the net income buy prices are a lot better for Tesla. It doesn't look that bad, but based on free cash flow, the buy prices are a lot lower. So if these free cash flow margins could increase a bit more over time, a better pace, you know, at the net income margin level, then it's actually undervalued with both mid and high end assumptions and just slightly overvalued with the low case assumption. So it all depends on your expectations. I feel like growth rates are fine here. I think the PE is fine as well. The big question is margins. If margins could come up a bit more, maybe even 16, 17, and 18%, which isn't out of the question over the long run, then it looks a lot better. It's undervalued with all metrics here, but we'll see over time what ends up happening. But right now, Tesla doesn't look too bad. You just have to be confident that they're going to really meet, especially these high-end assumptions. Now for Tesla's chart here, it does look a bit volatile. I think if you're a longer-term investor, you're looking at five to 10 plus years and you believe Tesla will still grow massively and margins will increase over time and demand will stay consistent, then you don't mind buying right now because we are on a dip for sure. It doesn't look that bad. And even if we go down to 140 a share, you could continue to add to your position and over time, you'll still make a lot of money. But if you're a shorter term investor, you're unsure, you're not as confident in Tesla as a company and as a stock, I wouldn't say right now there's a clear, clear buy signal. It doesn't look terrible. I mean, it's we seem to have some type of support here at 180, 170 a share. 
which is where we're sitting right now. We're right above that around 190-ish here. So it doesn't look terrible, but it is a bit risky. So let me know down below your opinions on Tesla stock. I think over the long run, they're still a great company. They should still do well, but we are in this weird limbo period to where could we go down 20%? Could we go up 20% in the next couple months? In my opinion, there's equal chances that both happen. So let me know down below your opinions on Tesla stock. Be sure to subscribe for more stock analysis videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.